FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and it's Monday, July 23rd. And hey, we are back from Vancouver. We're back from Vegas, and it's great to be back home to steamy Florida. But uh, hey, it's, it, has its, uh, it has its good points. As always, we invite you to be part of the show. Just email us at kl at kerrylutz.com. I'm almost up to answering all of the questions that piled up while I was away. And we're making progress. So question is, does anybody look into the long term any longer? Do they really look ahead, try to figure out what the actions that you're taking today, what influence they're going to have on tomorrow, on people tomorrow, on children of tomorrow, on generations yet to come. Does government do any of that? Have they just stopped planning ahead, looking ahead and just living for today? Uh, it's a good question. Our good friend Martin Armstrong is with us from armstrongeconomics.com. Hey, Martin, it's been a while. Welcome back. Well, thank you for inviting me. As always. So, hey, we got these problems going on in the world. We were talking about Italy. Italy, you think, could have a revolution within a few years? I mean, they just elected this new government, which seems hell-bent. Uh, to call them Euroskeptic is to put it uh, charitably, isn't it? Well, it, it's... It, um... The election was basically, what people have to understand is that Italy had no property tax. Real estate was the place you saved money. If you didn't trust the bank, you bought as many properties as you, as you could. You basically just rented them out, and rental income was, was virtually nothing. You, it was enough just to pay you know, you know, taxes. That was it. Um, so... In 17, they started revising these things. They put in a, um, an actual sales tax, they called a stamp duty, that if you're going to buy your, um, a home, your primary home, then you paid a 2% sales tax when you bought the house. If it was a secondary home, 9% sales tax. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about major numbers here. Um, and what you have is that uh, you have Brussels and you have the IMF constantly harping, you have to raise taxes, you have to raise taxes. And um, the thing that they're focusing on the most is the fact that Italy has only a 4% inheritance tax. I mean, most other places are 15%, 17%. You know, twenty percent. So they're they're basically telling Italy that they should be tripling the inheritance tax. And the new government um, is, in at least, they're, they're euro skeptic, but maybe not skeptic enough, because um, nobody's really looking at this stuff long term. And if they go ahead and and triple the inheritance tax, you're going to see like an SNL crisis in in Italy. I mean, because this is where people have have bought houses as their savings. Mm -hmm. So you're going to create a one-way market as they did um, basically with the SNL crisis, because back then it was the Democrats saying, oh, gee, all these people making money off of real estate, we should raise the taxes, and they changed the amortization tables. Once they did that, you created a one-way market. Mm -hmm. Then everybody wanted to sell. There's no, no bid. And... You know, this is the danger for Italy, and, and you can see a revolution basically popping up in Italy uh, by 2021. Uh, th there's just nobody in government, and I don't care if we're talking about Europe, the United States, or Asia. <laughs> there is no planning. It's mm -hmm. like, what do I need for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And there, there's just no thought process. Um I mean, I just did a piece on like New Jersey, you know, okay, fine, we need money for our own pension, so we'll, oh, we'll yeah. tax water now. <laughs> I yeah. mean, uh, you're already paying, so, and then they, they lie about that, and they say, well, it's not a tax, it's a fee. 
Well, if it's a fee, then it should be a flat fee. No, mm-hmm. they want you know ten cents per thousand, 10, you know per thousand gallons. Yeah. So it, it's a tax. You can call it a you know uh, whatever you want, but it, it, if it's going to continue to rise with your usage, it's not a it's not a, a fee like a driver's license. Mm-hmm. So. But it, it's it's systemic, and the problem is that politicians are – there's no qualification whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just look at this girl who was 28 just elected in, in, um, oh, in New York. Ocasio Lopez. In, in the right. primary. Ocasio Lopez. I mean, fine, nice-looking girl, whatever. She was a waitress and a bartender. She should have stuck right, to it. <laughs> she has zero experience in anything. Cortez. And yeah. this is why um, around the world they call it the Trump Revolution. But, it, you know, people don't understand what it is. It's really – it's not a left or right view. She mm-hmm. was elected in the Democrats, all right? It's part of the same revolutionary process. It's, it's whoever's in power is being basically thrown out. You saw it in Malaysia. You, you saw it basically in Spain. Um, you have the same thing in Italy, Hungary. You got Brit exit. It's it's mm-hmm. systemic and it's across the globe. It's because politicians have no planning skills. It's just they have looked at people as well. You know, they're just the dumb sheep. And, we, and if we ever need money, we just raise taxes. That's it. Yeah. So there's no management skills. And I mean, if you had a business and you kept raising your prices simply because you need money, you're going to be out of business. <laughs> and yeah. if they just don't get it. You know, they you know, how can. All right. If government is supposed to be efficient, et cetera, then why do you need more than 10 percent? If you're, if you're taxing 10 percent this year and then it's next year, 15, then it's 20. You're obviously confirming you don't know how to manage anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really pretty bad. I mean, why do you always have to raise taxes? And the, the meaning is because you don't know how to manage anything. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? And I mean, you look at states like New York, New Jersey, California, Illinois, and then the new tax bill, it's the death knell for those states, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, as you know, I, I worked in, in Washington trying to help with Social Security. I was asked to, to design, to, to turn it into a, into a, uh, a wealth fund. Mm-hmm. It was going to be privatized. This is back when, in, in the early 90s. And I said, okay, fine, this is the way we do it. We put out, um, <clears throat> people submit their track records, and we allocate money out. And the Democrats wouldn't go for it. Because they said, well, gee, when we get in, uh, we want to be able to change the fund managers. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is not – you don't give money because who they voted for. It's what's your track record? What mm-hmm. have you done? I don't care who we voted for. Um, and, and, it, and that's why Social Security is basically broke because they could never – come to an agreement to simply say, let's manage the, the country's money, the people's money correctly. No, it's like, what am I going to get out of it? <laughs> hey, and you see it. It's like the, like the Clintons when they left the White House. What did they do? They stole a couch. And the they silverware. Turn it back. And I mean, the silverware. do you go to a hotel and do you leave with the bed? If you're the Clintons, you might. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's a matter of character. I mean, do you Black actually you do that? I mean, um, mm-hmm. and, oh, okay, fine. I thought it was really mine. So, you know, Congress has to say this is kind of unusual. All right, we'll give it back. Yeah, yeah we'll just give uh, it back. Right. It's just, it's, it's all the way across the board, you know, and it, it's just a, a um, it, it's terrible. But, you know, that's why they hate Trump so much is because basically he's not one of them. And mm-hmm. he's looking at some of this stuff and saying, hey, you know, this is kind of crazy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so um, what about Trump? I mean, he hasn't, cu- he hasn't been able to cut back on spending. We're still heading towards disaster on that score. And he's limited, like, by his own party, what he can get accomplished here. Uh, what's his next step here to take control of this thing? I don't know if I don't think he's going to be able to. It you know the it's not a swamp; it's an ocean. Mm. Um, 
and a deep one. <laughs> yeah, very deep one. And and it's, I mean, this is why they have they just own him constantly on absolutely everything. And no matter what he does, they turn it into something negative. Um, mm-hmm. When I go to Asia, it, it, I'm you know, really stunned. And, and they say, you know, what's wrong with CNN? I said, you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> what's right From their you? perspective, Trump has done a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. They said he's got trade actually being negotiated. He is the first one that got North Korea to walk across the line. Yeah. Um, you know, even when NATO, I mean, he was the first guy that walked into NATO and turned it into a trade dispute. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. hey, you want, yeah. you're going to pay more here. Otherwise, I'm going to block all your, your, you know, it. it he's negotiating mm-hmm. instead of like, what's in it for me? Yeah. Um, you know, but the, I mean, that it, it's limited. I mean, because mm-hmm. he is so outnumbered. I mean, you take the um, the meeting with Putin. I mean, there's a, 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 a great example, because I actually w- was involved. I mean, my case is exactly what Putin was talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, Putin basically said, <clears throat> fine, Mueller, you want to come over here and, and interrogate Russians? Feel free. Let us do the same. And what did he say? I want to come over there and look at basically what was Bill Brower, uh, yeah. Hermitage Capital, Republic Bank, because they basically mm-hmm. blackmailed Yeltsin. Yeah. That's how Putin got in, because they were trying to take over uh, Russia. They mm-hmm. were interfering over there. They were actually blackmailing Yeltsin. That he, uh, they set him up that he stole seven billion dollars from the IMF loans, and then they wanted him to appoint. Barishnovsky, when he realized he was set up, he turned to Putin, and then Barishnovsky flees. He's yeah. amazingly uh, commits suicide, hanging himself in uh, in in London. Zafir, of course, is, is is killed. All his twenty three bodyguards are given a night off. Everybody that was involved is basically dead. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Um, but that's what it was about. There was the United States interfering with the Russian elections. Uh-huh. And we've interfered with, with with Canada, with France. I mean, come on. We were even tapping Merkel's phone. I mean, they all do this. Yeah, everybody this is taps standard operational procedure. Everybody taps everybody's phone, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the, the NSA has absolutely every phone call in the entire world. Mm-hmm. And this is this is their problem. I mean, because they they have they're collecting so much data mm-hmm. that it's impossible for them to even go through and defend against a terrorist act. It would be in two days. Yeah, they wouldn't get to it. <laughs> I mean, here you had like the Boston you know guys with the yeah. marathon. They were two kids with cell phones. Mm-hmm. All right. And they couldn't pick that up because you're collecting absolutely everything on everybody. Oh, well, maybe he might have said something. Well, why don't you just focus on what is called probable cause? Mm-hmm. Then you may have actually prevented it, you know. But yeah. um, when you collect absolutely everybody in the country, you know, 99.999% are not interested in terrorism. Yeah. Yeah, there's no filter. Which is a real problem. Yeah, it, it's just crazy. So then you, you'll you never find something that somebody said on the phone, oh, yes, let's go do this tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So so Trump, is he going to get reelected according to the model? Probably. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean... <clears throat> I mean, if he doesn't really, it's it's going to be more of a coup. But by the time we get to 2020, honestly, I don't think we have more than two to three years left. Um, the financial system is is really really cracking, and uh, this is this is the serious problem. I mean, you have Europe is basically now a third world country. Mm-hmm. I mean, China's economy is bigger than the EU. I mean, the whole thing, uh, you remember, we're, oh, we're going to create the euro and we're going to be bigger than the mm-hmm. United States. And, and they're, they're just so pathetic. It, it, it's crazy. Um, and, 
you know, uh, I've been in, you know, I, I go over to Brussels, you know, at least three times a year. And, you know, they, all they've done is try to basically be authoritarian. Uh, they're trying to force everybody to comply with with their rules and and the problem is you, you had merkel with the refugee crisis she's the one that just unilaterally stood up and said oh i'll take them in because my polls are down it wasn't submitted to the european parliament nobody voted for this mm-hmm. and then when she creates the nightmare then Oh, gee, well, we have to support her. And then they dictate to everybody else that you have to take some of these people because Germany can't handle them all. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it just came out. I mean, the police report leaked out. She's like trying to deport people now because Mm -hmm. now she realizes that she's about ready to get kicked out because everybody's so angry about this. They can't even find 50 percent of the people. Of course not. Who knows where they are? Once Nobody you're, knows where they are. Once you're in any country in the EU, you're in the entire EU. You could be anywhere. They just they blended in and they're gone. And um, they're trying to deport these people. They went, oh, well, they're not really from Syria. Well, where are they? Well, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a mess. Complete yeah. mess. Mm, that's for sure. And the Italians are rebelling against it now. The new Italian government is sending the ships back. <laughs> Say, hey, go drown. We don't care. Well, that's a classic example. Italy was being forced to take in all these people. Then they went to Brussels and they said, well, off of the the criteria for our budget, we should get a compensation to take care of all these people. And Brussels said, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. You still have to comply with with this. So then Italy said, all right, fine. Well, we're going to send, allow them, <clears throat> we'll give them passports and we'll let them go north. Mm-hmm. Then they send in troops to block anybody from moving. Yeah. So it's like, <clears throat> what are you doing? You, there, there's no rational understanding here. There's a serious problem. Mm-hmm. And they just try to to you know force their way through it. So yeah, Italy's got to you know say okay, fine, that's it. We can't afford this. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I say that you know you're you're probably looking at a revolution because mm-hmm. <clears throat> trying to work with Brussels is impossible. And so at the end of the day, they're going to have to leave the euro. That's it. The euro yeah. is basically going to collapse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and we see it again. Uh, it's been declining against the dollar. Not that the dollar has been so healthy, inherently healthy, but relative to the world's other currencies, it's the last man standing, right? It's the prettiest of the three ugly sisters. They say. Yeah. <laughs> um, China's not ready. Um, still has, you know, currency controls and things of this nature. I mean, that's why real estate over there has been doing so well because people. Um, if they can't get the money out of the country and they don't necessarily trust the banks, so they've been buying property. Yeah. And um, so it's kind of similar to, to Italy in that respect. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, that's why Bitcoin was doing so, so well. Nobody were, oh, it's with Bitcoin. No, it wasn't Bitcoin. It's, you know, more than 80% of all the terminals were in China. Mm-hmm. It was just a money laundering operation. They were using Bitcoin to get the money out. Yeah. And then they, they'd sell the Bitcoin and go buy property in Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. Hancouver, as they call it now, is just up yeah, there it's, last it's, week. It's, uh, I mean, all you got to do is pick up the you know the rug a little bit and just look, um, but you know I mean China will eventually become the financial capital of the world. But I mean they're getting there slowly, mm-hmm. but you know they're not quite ready for prime time just yet. I mean they are the second largest economy in the world, but they're still trying to control the currency, um, and I mean that's why Japan never really made it. Um, in Japan, if you wanted to issue a, a note or a bond in Japanese yen, you had to get approval from the Ministry of Finance. Mm-hmm. The dollar is the world's currency because you can issue, I can issue a bond to you in, in dollars in, in Singapore. Right. We don't have to go to Washington to ask permission, can we denominate our, our security in dollars? Anybody can. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why you also have third world countries uh, with massive dollar debts. They've issued all these bonds and dollars, 
um, and that's why the you know you have emerging market you know uh, debt crisis that's building. Uh, as the dollar goes up, these people can't pay back. They've lost a, a ton of money on the foreign exchange. Right. Yeah. Very true. Very true. And uh, in effect, they it was the biggest short of all times. How how much longer is that going to go on for? Do you think? I don't. I, honestly. Um, I doubt you're going to be able to see this continue much beyond about 2021 at the max. Um, I do think we're probably going to have to have some sort of a currency reset. Uh, But uh, the euro has basically shot itself in the foot. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in meetings and, and, you know, they wanted to take away uh, trading in the euro from Britain. Mm -hmm. And. The reason, if the euro comes under attack, they want to be able to, you know, outlaw short selling and stuff like that. Mm. So I asked them, I said, you know, okay, fine. This is just being punitive to Britain. What do you mean? I said, are you going to take it away from New York, from Chicago, from Tokyo, from Hong Kong, from yeah. Shanghai? And they look at you and they go, well, no, just Britain. And I said, well, you're not going to be able to create... You know, what are you trying to do with the euro? You're trying to turn it into uh, the old Soviet, you know, ruble <laughs> that nobody can trade it. <laughs> yeah, Crazy. I mean, they. This is the problem with them. They 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 outlaw short selling bonds unless you have them. Um, it's they just think that they can keep some sort of massive control over the economy to, to make it, to prevent it from crashing that would prevent them, you know, that would cost them their jobs. Um, so, I mean, honestly, when I go yeah. to Brussels, it is no longer about what's good for the continent. Mm-hmm. The heck with the people, the heck with the economy. It's all about, gee, if the euro goes, we lose our pensions and our jobs. Uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> Okay. So, hey, getting back to Bitcoin for a minute. So it was a big money laundering scheme, still is to some extent, but uh, is it going to come back or is there going to be another uh, cryptocurrency that takes its place, do you think? No, I mean, basically the the cryptocurrency uh, phase is kind of done Mm -hmm. in in that most of the countries have, have... come out against it now because uh, it was basically being used for for moving money around um, right. and then you had a lot of people that were believing the the nonsense that oh this is going to replace the dollar it's going to replace all central banks I mean the governments are the ones with the tanks and the guns yeah do you really think that they're going to let something like that happen mm-hmm. um, all they got to do is declare it illegal yeah. And, oh, you got some? Well, you go to jail. That's it. Yeah, like I uh, said, uh, possess, if, you had, if you were looking at five years p- for possession with intent to distribute Bitcoin, how many brave people out there would be, uh, would be trading Bitcoin? <clears throat> Look, I retired. I used to make markets in gold. Hmm. After 1980, they just walked in and they declared me to be a bank. I looked at them and they said, well, we realized you didn't understand that you were a bank. I said, no, I did not. (laughs) Um, And they basically, the excuse was, well, they never actually demonetized gold as money. They just closed the gold window. So therefore, it's still money. I said, yeah. Okay, fine. So therefore, our interpretation is you're a bank and you should have been reporting everybody that bought and sold more than $10,000. Really? Yeah, I mean, so that was it. I mean, I, I that's why I retired. I mean, they went out and ordered like three thousand of our clients, mm-hmm. and you know, and I talked to my lawyers. I said, "How you know what is this?" He says, "Look, you'll spend millions of dollars in legal fees. You'll get to a federal court, and lose. the federal judge is always going to rule in the favor of the government." Yeah, you're going to lose anyway. That's a, yeah, that's it's, a just, given. it's impossible. You can't. You'll, fight you know, the you're law. they're going to determine that you're a bank, and that's it. So that's why I quit. I said, all right, fine, I'm retiring. The heck with this. I don't <laughs> want to be a banker and have to report on everybody that does business with me. I mean, it's ridiculous. If they All they have to do with Bitcoin is do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's really a brokerage, so you got to be registered, or it's a bank, or some other you know thing like that. And then everybody that has a terminal, that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Good night, yeah. Irene. <laughs> And they have the ability to basically hack everybody, right? 
I mean, they can know. Yeah, I mean, look, you can't. It's when you you're talking about you know um, money. It's kind of like they say, never walk between a bear and its cub. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing. Never walk between money and the government. Yeah. Yeah. And the right to issue uh, currency, that's uh, all of the government's power just about derives from that nowadays in the modern Well, it's not state. so much that. It's the fact that it's taxes. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big Canadian um, case that, that has been going on for over a year. Um, in a state, the guy basically, you know, the executor uh, was a Canadian, but had relatives over here in America. So what it, they did, they basically settled the state. He wanted to get the money to them fast. So instead of wiring it, he gets a bank check mm -hmm. and sends it out. And then what happens? The border seizes it, says, oh, a bank check is the same thing as cash. $500,000, and it's been in limbo for over a year. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, this hmm. is the point. I mean, every time I come back, you know, not just to the United States, but I, even when I, I travel to London, uh, I was going from Brussels to, to London, took the train. Mm -hmm. So I had just finished a meeting there in Parliament, so I had a suit and tie on. And I'm running over to, to London, to, and I would get a hotel there and get changed for meetings over there. So I'm... The, Really, the only guy with a suit and tie on on the train. Everybody else is in jeans to sneak. I'm the one called over. Yeah. How much money you got? Excuse me? I said, well, I'm an American. That still wasn't good enough. Yeah. Where'd you buy the ticket? I said, Brussels. I'm over here for meetings. I go back, and I'm flying home from Frankfurt. I said, I'm not an expat. I'm not living here in, in Britain. Then they would finally let me go. But I had to prove where I bought my ticket. Oh, God. Yeah, well, that's uh, totalitarianism at its best, right? If you get on a pl on a train from Switzerland to Luxembourg, it goes passes through France. They're stopping them, and they're going on the trains and searching everybody's bags for money. Unbelievable. It's it's just wholesale confiscation. Yeah. So, is there anything we could do about this, or what do we do here? Martin, you said. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that's yeah. basically when you, you, you know, what revolutions are all about. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You mentioned uh, gold. You were seeing it going higher in the summer. You still sticking to that? Uh, no, afterwards. I mean, it's, it's, we had the little rally. Then, you know, we basically have gone back down. Gold is not ready yet. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, plus, a lot of the people that were in gold, they switched to the Bitcoin stuff. Yeah. You know? um, so, I mean, gold, what you have to understand is that gold is, is does not go up with inflation or any of those scenarios. It's all kind of nonsense. Yeah. Um, what it goes up with is when the confidence in government collapses. Mm -hmm. at, at that stage in the game, basically anything tangible rises. The stock market will rise. Yeah. Um, I mean, everything will go up at that stage. I mean, that's, you know, um, even the German hyperinflation, when it was over, they issued a new currency. What was it backed by? Real, Real estate. estate. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it, it, a this idea of hyperinflation means that the currency declines against everything that's tangible. Mm -hmm. So it's not just gold or one, yeah. you know, or something like that. It's it's across the board. Um, the disadvantage of gold today versus even 25 years ago. Uh, honestly, you could hop on a plane with with gold, you know, 20 years ago with no problem. I mean, now, good luck. Yeah. Yep. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that you know, the you truth? take ten, ten, twenty dollar gold pieces. They'll conf TSA will confiscate it from you. Yeah. Oh, that's more than ten thousand dollars, and they know what the they know what the value is. Italy, yeah. you know what they're doing over there. People were were getting a lot of gold jewelry, very mm -hmm. heavy chains and stuff like that. Yeah. If they, it looks like you got too much on, they take it off and weigh it. Yeah, <laughs> even on the wearable stuff, huh? Yeah, it's it's wow. you know, it's it's getting. This hunt for money is, is just pervasive. 
Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to put up with more and more of it because until, you know, the, I mean, this is what the Trump revolution is about, mm-hmm. you know, and the, the 28 year old in, in <clears throat> New York who is on the Democratic side. It's, it's not yeah. a p- particular philosophy. It, it's basically who's ever in power, just throw them out. Yeah, that um, sounds good to me. You saw the same thing in 1933. You had the extreme right, Hitler gets elected. You have FDR um, on the socialist side in the United States. And then you had Mao, who was extreme left. So right. it wasn't a particular philosophy. Mm-hmm. It was whoever pitched the best thing at that particular time against whoever was in power. So it's just a product. It's a an appealing product. Uh, what appeals more, right? Yeah. So it, it's not, I mean, it's not a particular thing. It's just that, you know, we're getting to the point that, that it just becomes unsustainable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I mean, Illinois, it's it just, what do you do? You, you know, the, the court rules, it's in the constitution. So you can't even negotiate yeah. with, with these pensions. So all they do is they keep, keep raising taxes and ta- I mean, 25% increase in, ta- in property taxes and other 30%. I mean, you, it, it, you make it impossible for anybody to live. Yes. Very true. Very, very true. Sad state. Your, your house values declined. Um, the same thing's happening in California. I mean, it's uh, yeah. California now it has more people leaving than going to it. Um, Who would have thought? New Jersey, New York, Illinois, uh, Pennsylvania. It's all the same story. Everybody's moving either to Florida. There's only seven states without an income tax. <laughs> Um, uh, seven or nine. You got uh, South Dakota, Alaska. Nobody's moving to Alaska. You got New Hampshire. You have Tennessee, Nevada, Florida, and uh, I'm sure I'm missing one Texas. in there. Texas, of course. So that's it. That's your choice, huh? And yeah, look, and look at the states. Most growing. of them are seen to be coming to Florida or to Texas. Florida um, and Texas by far, but you know what? Nashville, Tennessee, for a little state, Tennessee is booming now, and you know, uh, people. Are, Nashville is the number one place for Airbnb uh, conversions of houses. Hey, that's another perfect example, Martin. You live in New York. You pay these outrageous rents or mortgage for a tiny bit of space. And then the government, and then you say, oh, Airbnb, I can defray a third of it or half of it. This is great. This is the best thing ever. I'm going to do Airbnb. And then what happens? The, the mighty fist of the uh, government comes down on you, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're doing the same thing in, in Greece. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going after people to rent their houses. Yeah, like... Hey, it's your house, I thought. I thought you had like a certain bundle of rights that came with your house. And then the government can just forcibly uh, eviscerate your bundle of rights and take them away from you because it might affect a hotel's occupancy rate by half a percent. I don't see the plaza suffering from Airbnb. Do you, Martin? No. I mean, um, this is the problem with the American justice system. Um, it is just, it's really just us. No, just it's us. Not just That's us. it. Hey, we've seen no. it. We've seen um, it. Mm-hmm. The problem is that Congress can legally pass a law that everybody has to kill their firstborn. Mm-hmm. Nothing yeah. there can prevent them from passing such a law. Yep. All right. What happens is <clears throat> now they come and they say, okay, fine, you have to kill your firstborn. Now you have a right to finally object. All right. If I don't have a firstborn, I have no standing in a court of law to say, I think that law is unfair. Oh, sorry. It's not applied to you. So get out. Yeah. Um, that's the problem we have with law. So they can do anything they want. Mm-hmm. And it's your burden and you have to have the money for legal fees, oh, et cetera, to get all we'll the way to you. the Supreme Court to have it declared unconstitutional. Mm-hmm. It, it's a very unfair system. Uh, um, 
You know, it it should be that if Congress is going to pass a law, it should go to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court should rule first. Yes, this is good. No, it's bad. Mm -hmm. And send it back. It shouldn't be the burden of every citizen in the country. And if you don't have enough money, it's you don't have any rights. It should be that, uh, you know, instead of having a presumption of validity of every statute the government passes and every rule they pass, there should be a presumption that it's invalid and that it violates the Constitution and let the government prove that it doesn't, you know. That was our big mistake is deference, judicial deference to the executive branch. There should be no deference. It should be the opposite of deference. It should be constant scrutiny, assuming that you're trying to screw everybody because that's what you do when you're in government. Yeah, I mean, the, they've turned the Constitution upside down. It, it was, it's a negative document mm -hmm. that is supposed to have been a restraint upon government. They've turned it into, oh, you waived your right, so I get to torture you. Yeah. Hey, and you, uh, you know, excuse me, I, you know, <laughs> you're not supposed to torture. Oh, but you waived it. It's okay now. Yeah. Hey, and, you know, we've seen it over and over and over again. And Trump uh, has attempted to do something. I don't know what really one man can really accomplish. You know, uh, was it Jefferson who said one man with courage is a majority? Um <laughs> I know. I think those days are gone. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you, you, you look at that Putin um, meeting. Why did the Justice Department come out two days before and indict the, yeah. the, the, the Russians? It, that shows the deep state working against Trump. They totally. knew that would create a, a, a controversy for his very meeting. Yeah. But now, I, if they were yeah. on his side, you don't do that before a yeah, meeting exactly. like that. Exactly. Well, they didn't want him to arrive at any accommodation with the Russians, right? I mean, it's exactly. so obvious. I mean, they know basically that, I mean, Obama's come out and said, look, it didn't affect the elections because nobody actually hacked into the machines. And what is the, the entire argument? Oh, mm -hmm. they hacked the Democratic files and they released them. Okay, but nobody has said that they altered any. Yeah. Very true. Okay, so whatever was released, all the corruption that they were talking about was real. Yeah. So it's kind of like Snowden. Oh, well, he's a traitor. Why? Because he told the people we were lying to him. Mm -hmm. Why is that a traitor against the country? If the country is the people, then he's basically telling the people that the, the government is lying to them. Mm -hmm. That How is that treason? Yeah, good question. But, you know, they turn it into if you rat on the government, that's treason. It's mm -hmm. not the people. I know. Very true. And according to the Supreme Court, the sovereign of the nation is the people, not the government. Yeah, and and the government's uh, here to serve you. You're not supposed to be a vassal of the state, but all of that has somehow changed. Yeah, over it's, time it's all here. been inverted. So yeah, very nice words. We the people. Yeah. yeah, we the people. Well, I guess as long as we the people put up with it, we the people are going to have to uh, take what comes from it, right? Yeah, I mean, this is why you end up with revolutions because mm -hmm. they will do whatever they can for as long as they can, and then, um, then they, you know, they suddenly stand up and say, "Oh, what? You, I've been stealing for for." 50 years, you never said anything. Now yeah. all of a sudden you're mad. Oh, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more, Martin. Could not agree with you more. Anyway, we got to wrap up. So find Martin's work over at armstrongeconomics.com and be part of the show. Just send us an email to kl at kerrylutz.com, Twitter feed at Carrie Lutz, Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. And Martin, it's always great speaking with you. We will talk to you again real soon and enjoy your summer. Oh, thank you very much. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.